<laughs> how they transmit? Well, they're not carrying anything, they're not moving mass, right? Yeah, it's kind of like dominoes. I mean, most ways. Uh, some, yeah. But how they transmit. So, yeah, something's vibrating. But just think of it, I mean, it's easier to think of dominoes and mechanical waves, where the air's vibrating and the water's vibrating, or these. So, all sor the source of all waves is a, is a vibration. Something's got to vibrate, so that's me. Well, they're connected. And so when I do this, it twists that one. This one feels it. So it gets disturbed. But just locally. Matter's not transmitted. Just like in dominoes, the individual one's just kind of back and forth. Send the pulse. But the wave can travel. But it, most waves need a medium to travel through to have that connection. But that's it. So when I'm talking, I'm changing the pressure. You know that when you do the nice hard consonants. And so you're uh, compressing the air together, and it increases the pressure there. But then it spreads apart and decreases it, a rare faction. Those hit the neighbors next to them and comp compress them, and domino effect to your ear. Electromagnetic waves drive themselves. We haven't talked about electricity and magnetism yet, but uh, the source are electrons ultimately and atoms. They're vibrating. They move. And when they, uh, they gain energy, they jump up energy levels. And when they drop back down, they give off energy. But it's pure energy. But it is a vibrating electric and magnetic field. They drive themselves. And we're going to learn, you guys know this, so electromagnetism, there's a connection there. A change in an electric field creates a magnetic field and vice versa. So they kind of drive themselves and don't need a medium. That's how light gets to us from the sun. And radiant e energy from heat, infrared, that's a transverse electromagnetic wave that doesn't need a medium to travel through. Is that how they have like cordless battery chargers? Um, yes. Electron electric toothbrush is a good example. It's it's not electrically connected to anything. Yeah, yeah. But what it does is it changes an electric and mag or magnetic field, which causes a change in the toothbrush. And yeah, you can get current to flow and store it up in a capacitor. Yeah. Wi-Fi, you know, your Bluetooth, all that's an electromagnetic wave that drives themselves. But it's that change in electric and magnetic field. They're vibrating. Electrons caused it. Transmits over. Causes electrons over here to move, and you can store it. She picks up our slides. If you, when you watch the videos, when I use the computer, she doesn't have to just video it. It's broadcast through electromagnetic waves over the network, and she records them. Well, heck, for that matter, that's how your clickers work. <laughs> Any other questions? Things that have been bothering you, not settling well, observations you noticed in the world around you? See, do I have those in front of me? Violin string number nine. Oh. I don't have that one printed off. Let me uh, pull it up. That's easy enough. Log in. Let's go to uh, student view so I don't accidentally review, reveal something you don't want. Well, you want me to, but I don't want <laughs> All right. Number nine, you said? There it is. So violinists sometimes bow a string to produce maximum vibration. Antinodes, and I haven't discussed antinodes yet. I intended to today. At one quarter and three quarters of the string length, rather than at the middle of the string. What is the effect on frequency when this occurs? 
So this is a good opportunity to, to do this. Um, so we talked about standing waves. And they're created by what effect? I mean, well, how, how do you get a standing wave? Waves are doing what? Yeah, back and forth. And so they can superposition themselves, superimpose. We call that interference. They can interfere constructively or destructively. Standing waves are constructive interference. That's where they reinforce each other. They're in phase. The one coming, the incident wave and the reflected wave match up. Constructive interference, in phase, add together. And you get uh, standing waves. Remember, they're standing because they look like they're not moving. We did that over here. So this is just a pulse. But if I keep driving it, and at a specific frequency, a frequency it wants to vibrate at. There's one. Whoop. <laughs> We're going to learn about that too. When it likes to res drive at that frequency, there's a driving frequency. That's me. This has a natural frequency. It wants to vibrate at certain frequencies, naturally. If the driving frequency matches a natural frequency, you get constructive interference, and we call it resonance. And you get these different modes. Let me go slower. That'll be easier. And since I'm not up top anymore for the camera, let me turn the lights back on. There's one. So it doesn't look like a pulse is traveling left and right anymore, just kind of like a standing wave. Just a bump goes up and down. But we know a wave is traveling this way and reflecting back, and they match up. So back to these pictures. The first one vibrates slower. We talked about that. But there are some terms. Nodes. Nodes. N O D E S are the endpoints, like here where the hand is, and at this end. That's where it doesn't look like the medium's moving much. There's not much displacement from equilibrium. Those are called nodes. So in this fundamental frequency here at the top, there are two nodes. One, two. The part where maximum displacement occurs from the equilibrium position is called an anti-node. And that would be in the middle. So in the fundamental frequency, there's one anti-node. You with me? In this one, which is vibrating how much faster? Twice as fast. Yeah, the wavelength's half the length. Here's an anti-node, and here's an anti-node. How many nodes are there? One, two, three. So the middle will look like it's not moving also. How many nodes in this one? Four. One, two, three, four. How many anti-nodes? One, two, three. Okay, now that we have some terminology down, I wanted to teach you that anyway, so there we go. Back to the question. What did I ask? I forgot. <laughs> Sometimes they bow a string to produce a maximum vi vibration. We know what that is. At what one quarter and three quarters of the string length? So let's look at this. Do you see how th if this is the string length from the wall to the hand? Then a quarter of the way and three quarters of the way. See, this is halfway. So at a quarter and three quarters, we have anti-nodes where there's maximum displacement. Uh, what is the effect on frequency when this occurs? Well, if you were paying attention, we just answered that. <laughs> I think that helped your question. But is anybody else confused before I outright give you the answer again? You think you got it? Good. All right. While I have this open, I forgot there was this nice picture when someone asked about wavelength on longitudinal waves. See how there's a compression here and here? That distance between is a wavelength. Correspondingly, it could look like this in a transverse wave if it wiggles perpendicular to the wave motion. So the slinky's going up and down here, wave's going side to side. Here, the slinky's going back and forth, but the wave's going in the same axis. And there are some other good pictures in here. Yeah, earthquakes. Did you know they put out both kinds of waves? Yeah, he did. 
they put out longitudinal waves and transverse waves, and you can use they go through different parts of the Earth differently. Uh, the P wave is a I remember is a pressure wave, and that's like sound, so it's longitudinal. And S waves they call them; those are transverse, sideways. I, that's how some people remember it. But they go in different directions and travel at different speeds through the Earth, and so you can uh, calculate their wave velocity. You know, if an earthquake was set off here and we detected it this much later over here, but another station over here detected it at this point, you can, it's like probing the Earth. And you can see what it's going through. I thought that was interesting, if you didn't read about that in the book. Here's our uh, interference and reinforcement. See there, those are in phase. This is what, what inter, uh, blank interference. Which one's this? Constructive. And this one is? Destructive. See how they're out of phase? There's an, a picture of water waves, real water waves. I showed you with a, on a transparency. A source is here, something's vibrating the water up and down there. Something's doing it the same here. But when those wave fronts interfere, you can get this constructive and destructive, destructive patterns. Now, more on Doppler effect. That's where we left off. Oh, I'll just put the mic near here. I forgot to bring the uh, audio cable. So the car is uh, emitting waves. You can see that. They're circular. They emit in all directions. And so if you're, you're standing here, the waves pass you at the same frequency the car gives off. We don't hear a difference in frequency. But when the car starts traveling towards you, isn't that cute? So look at how the wave fronts smoosh together as the car is catching, is moving in the same directions of the waves coming at, at us, the uh, receiver, and then compare them as the car is leaving, moving away from us. the Doppler effect. So this will help demonstrate it some more. Uh, start emission. Okay, so there's the source emitting over there on the left. And up top, you can see the frequency it's emitting. Pause it. It's kind of blue, isn't it? He's going to holler at me. Let's just see if one of the pins isn't connected very well. See if we get lucky. Oh, I like that better. Okay, <laughs> back to the top. So there's the frequency. You can see it's nice and symmetric. We'll keep going. We're an observer over here on the right. That'll be the bottom graph. So we'll resume. We haven't heard anything yet because it takes time for sound to travel. But boom, now it's passing our ear at the same interval it's emitted. But I'm gonna I'm gonna move the source and it's gonna come at us. We don't notice a difference yet, but you can see the wave fronts interfering and getting closer together. I'll stop. Those wave fronts pass our ear. Look at the graph now. Doom, 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 doom. Pause it. So up here, see how the uh, frequency has increased? That's why you hear a higher pitch. We haven't changed the pitch or the frequency that's being emitted. We just hear it at a higher frequency because that's how it passes our eardrum. Yes? No, ideally the amplitude stays the same, yeah. Yeah, it's still just as loud. Now in reality, sound is a form of energy. I mean, there's energy in, in the medium, right? And so it does dissipate with distance. So, you know, the farther away you are, the quieter it's going to sound. But, no, for Doppler effect, it has no effect, the amplitude. Yeah, Ron? So, so you're saying that we just perceive a frequency? Yeah. The source, we haven't, the source has not changed. That's what I'm saying. But it's a real effect. I mean, it's not just something we, th I mean, we put a microphone there or a, some other detector. Yeah. The waves are literally passing the observer at a faster rate. So for him, the frequency 
is higher, yeah. Yeah, so when you hear that, that's real to you. In a sense, yeah, relative motion. Because, again, because there's relative motion between the source and the absorber. This is true. Well, let me finish this part. We'll continue on here. Now the waves pass back at the same rate because there's no motion between them. Let's move the source back. We don't notice anything yet, but you see how the wave fronts are spreading out behind it? Now they start passing the observer and we, they uh, vibrate our eardrum less frequently. And you can see that in the graph up here. Longer wavelengths, slower frequency. And it works whether the source is moving or the observer. Wait for it to settle back down. There we go. Now they're matched back up. Let's move the observer. You don't see the wave fronts bunch up, but you're moving, right? You're intercepting them more quickly than waiting for them to get to your ear. And you can see that in the graph, can't you, up here? The frequency's increased. So it is relative motion. And it, the Doppler effect is true whether the source or the observer is moving. If you're coming together, either this one, this one, or both, then you hear an increase in frequency. And if you're spreading apart, whether it's the source, the observer, or both, you hear a decrease in frequency. And this is true for all waves, even light. So let's pause that one and talk about shock waves. So here's a different animation, sound source gives off, but as the source moves, the waves bunch up, so let's move it to the left a little. Gives off waves at an equal interval, but to the left they bunch up, they interfere, and to the right they spread out. You've probably seen this too, you know, a boat through water, you can see the wave fronts in the front get smooshed together. So what happens if the sound source or it doesn't even have to be a sound source. If it's a boat, it's not making sound. It's just making the ripples. What if it's moving fa as fast as the waves of sound it emits or the ripples in the water that it emits? So this, the wave velocity of the waves, I know that was redundant, but the water waves or the sound, what if you're traveling that fast? What happens? No change? That's a good guess. I'm going to show you here. Any other ideas? But it would ride on the front of the wave. Oh, there's two extremes. No change at all versus they completely bunch up all at the front. Another vote for that one? Hey, somebody read the book. <laughs> so let's see if I can... Let's get see the ratio up there in the yellow box, upper right corner. If the ratio is 1... There, it's the same speed. So the waves travel outward, but the boat is traveling at the same speed, so it stays with the waves. So yeah, they all bunch up together like that. And there's a wave front. They're all interfering right in the same spot. So if you're standing over here in the bottom right, and that wave front passes you, you get all those waves at once. It's like a sonic boom. And it's just because, here's one wave, you'd hear the sound, but if you hear that one and all the other waves that's ever emitted on top of each other, now the amplitude increases. Yeah, it sounds like a sonic boom. So when you uh, go the speed of the wave, that's when you could create, let's go faster, what will happen? Let's go more than one. What do you think? You're going to outrun the waves you're producing. You're right. See those wave fronts? It kind of makes a V-shape, yeah. We call that a, a bow wave if it's two-dimensional like this, like a boat in the water. And if it's an airplane, it goes out as a cone three-dimensionally, and it's called a shock wave, bow wave, shock wave. Same thing, just 2D or 3D. But yeah, it's like that. What if we go even faster? How will the shape of that V change? That's cruise. So you guys have heard of Mach 1, Mach 2, Mach 3. Mach 1 is going the same speed. 
uh, you know, there-ish. They all bunched up together. You're going the speed of sound. Break the sound barrier. It's not really a barrier. They just they thought it was a barrier because all those sound waves bunch up. It's going to take a lot of energy to get through. No, 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 you just just rev it. Up, you know, hit the accelerator a little more, go a little faster. Let's go Mach two. Looks like that. Mach three. You're going three times as fast. And two, 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 two. See how the the V narrows because you're outrunning the waves even faster. But it's still a shock wave. Yeah. Well, wh whoops. What are these waves? What are they making vibrate? Yeah. yeah, and it's a pressure wave, right? And if you add all that front up, uh, right along here, this front, if you're standing where my arrow's at, you haven't heard anything yet because those sound waves haven't reached you. But if you are standing right here, you're getting all of those superimposing and interfering on top of each other all at once and it's a lot of pressure so it's loud and it can break windows so does it break the windows because of pressure changes on the outside yeah a, a, that high pressure cuz we you know pressure waves are like this yeah when it compresses there's a big pressure difference on the two sides of the window and if the window can't handle that yeah and remember pressure over an area of the window causes a force and if that force is larger than the force of the tension in the window, you know, the molecules between glass, then yeah, whammo. Um, here's a picture. Somebody caught when it uh, passed the sound barrier. So it started a, a, a shock wave. When that happened, there was a big difference in pressure. And we know that pressure drives weather. Uh, you can cause condensation to come out as you pass by. Yeah, first, it, they compress all together, but then it quickly relaxes. That's, what, that's the boom you hear. But as it expands, we know air cools, pulling energy out. And we had a phase change. The moisture in the air condensed, and you can see it as a little cloud of vapor. Yeah, it's an excellent picture. Um, Light, you know, my all-time favorite topic that works with light, and this is my all-time favorite bumper sticker. It's a red sticker. If this sticker is blue, you know, it's on your back bumper. If this sticker is blue, then you are driving too fast. Somebody explain that to me. The spectrum of light can get compressed, too. I'll sum it up more. Light's a wave. So everything we just said works for light. The Doppler effect. This is the Doppler effect for light. It's just, you, you know, we're dealing at a lot faster speeds, right? Uh, you know, for sound, you have to go near the, spe near the no, that's not true. But you've got to at least go a fair proportion of the speed of sound to see an effect of this Doppler effect. That's why cars and planes have to be moving fast. You don't hear a Doppler effect when I'm talking, are you? <laughs> so with light, you've got to be going a lot faster. So I think one thing this is funny is you can calculate this out. You'd have to be going you know, around a third of the speed of light to even see this effect. <laughs> so if you're driving that fast, you've got other issues. But let's see, that's red, red light. How does red light compare to blue light? Lower frequency. Lower frequency. And the wavelength? Longer, Longer wavelengths. Okay. So... If we're coming, because we're going too fast, we're approaching this car, we're coming together. The frequency should shift which way? Higher, just like with sound. So as it's coming together, it's higher. So the red should get shifted to a higher frequency. Well, that's towards the blue end of the spectrum, right? So yeah, if this sticker is blue, you're driving too fast, clearly. Would it go through all the other colors? It would. If you were going a little slower... It might look green, a little slower, orange. Yeah. But yeah, you'd have to be going really fast to see that effect. However, this is true for stars. We can tell how fast the star's rotating. Remember I had that buzzer 
and I spun around, and you could hear the shift in frequency. What if a star is rotating? The light that's emitted from this edge of the, light of the star whoosh, is shifted higher in frequency because it's coming at you. This one's shifted lower. And the difference tells you how fast it's rotating, the relative motion between the star, the two edges. Okay, what's the difference between visible light and ultraviolet light? Wavelength, yes, what else? Frequency. Is wave velocity changed? No, that's correct. We're not changing the speed of light. And so what you're implying is if we could go, f like we can go faster than the speed of sound, if we could go faster than the speed of light, which we've already talked about that. Whoops, it doesn't work. <laughs> anyway, that's cool. You can try that your next uh, when you get next time you're pulled over by a cop. See what he tells you. Probably won't work. All right, pull out your clickers. Let's ask you some questions. All right, there's your first question once you get your devices out and logged in. By the way, while you're reading this, we haven't gotten to it, but in the United States, our electricity, when you plug in, vibrates, alternates direction. It's called alternating current, AC. 60 times a second, it's 60 hertz. In Europe, it's 50. But that just means it changes directions 50 times a second. But there's a vibration. So basically, I'm giving you the frequency. See if you can remember how to find period. At least I hope you know the frequency. <laughs> then, no, it, again, it. it doesn't mean ours is more powerful. It's just changing directions at a different rate. Why is arbitrary? I mean, there were historical reasons, but we could have it alternate at 200 hertz if we felt like it. I think while you're answering, uh, historically, I think it was uh, honestly, it, was, it would go through some lights or some early electrical devices. And if it was a too slow of a rate, we could see the light flicker because it was too slow and our eyes could keep up. But essentially, by the time you get to 50 or 60 hertz, we can't notice the change. And it's not annoying and people don't get epilepsy. You know. <laughs> All right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. OK. You're right. Good. Any questions? Means you got that. Okay, go. Wave interference occurs for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, D. Somebody answered F. All right, good. <laughs> You're right, good. Interference occurs for any kind of wave. Um, this one. Go. Standing wave is produced by reflected waves undergoing what? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, bless you, two, one, zero, again. There's the 30th. Okay, some of you think just for Doppler shifts, but most of you interference. It is interference. Standing waves are interference. They, 
It didn't have anything to do with the Doppler effect. <laughs> That's just because I did the Doppler effect after interference. <laughs> but the incident wave and the reflected wave, they come together and they interfere. When they add up, we can cause a standing wave. Resonance, it likes it. That's interference. And I had one more. What's a shock wave a result of? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come on, thirtieth. Eh. All right, most of you B superposition. That is correct. The wave fronts. You're moving with them, so. When you hear a shock wave, all those waves are just piled on top of each other. They're superimposed. It's, it's multiple waves on top of each other. That's superposition. Now, there, there's two ways waves can superimpose. Constructive interference and destructive interference, and I've given you examples of that. Okay, you can put your clickers away. Am I done with this? Yes. So, if you haven't looked ahead, this stuff uh, overlaps a lot. It superimposes. And so, we've actually talked already about a, lot, a lot about Chapter 20, as well as the upcoming chapters with light. Chapter 26, properties of light. Well, a lot of them are very simple, are similar to sound waves because they're waves. And so um, it's good because I've already taught you all that. <laughs> Let's do did that, did that, did that, did that. Remind you about the whip. Remember the little tip, what it does when you don't tie knots in it? <laughs> so next time you're at a rodeo or something, yeah. make sure I don't hit myself. That's a sonic boom. Told you that before. It's going faster than the speed of sound. This is not a sound source. It does not make sound. It's not like, la. But... If something that's causing the vibration can move faster than the waves it emits, you get a sonic boom. That's what we just did. That's what a whip does. Now let's talk more about sound in general and how it transmits through media. Because waves, including light, get absorbed, cause the medium to wiggle, they transmit through kind of like dominoes and can come out. Even light can do, does that, interacts with the medium. It doesn't need the medium to travel. It can travel through empty space. But we know light can go through glass. It can travel through water. But what it does is it causes interactions molecularly through the medium, kind of like dominoes. So if I hit this steel... There's a wave traveling back and forth, just like over here. It's just way faster than that. The uh, speed of sound in air, we, we brought that up before, was... Somebody knew it before. 340 meters per second. So, sound in air, in room temperature. In uh, steel, it's like, I wrote it down, 15 times? Yeah, 15 times faster, the wave velocity. In water, it's four times faster. If you cool the air off, 
I mentioned this before too. It's the same medium, but you're changing the medium. And so at zero degrees Celsius, it's that. You can change that wave speed. So it does matter what you're going through and the interactions it has. But it's those interactions that define the wave velocity. You can do the Doppler effect with this too. I don't know, could you hear it? <laughs> hear a little shift? <laughs> anyway, this is what my dominoes are for. Let's say we got two mediums here. These, let's say the atoms are far apart, and here they're close together. If I make a vibration over here, it's going to travel through them. Which one do you think it'll travel through more quickly? Farther apart, how come? Less to interfere with? Any other votes? You may think it'll tie, who cares, doesn't matter. You think it'll tie? All right, now, I didn't want to set it up, you know, a mile long, so the effect isn't huge. So is everybody watching? You zoomed in? Because <laughs> uh, it goes fast. <laughs> you ready? Let's see. Well, the ones that were closer together won. The wave was transmitted more quickly where there were more interactions. That's how I remember it. It's all about interactions. Think about it. You, know, you bump your neighbor. If they're close together, that they can quickly bump their neighbor and their neighbor and their neighbor. And so it travels through it faster. I also remember it because I know sound is faster in, in solids. Have you ever put your ear to a, a train rail or in the swimming pool or even on a table? You can hear a sound through the medium, the steel, the solid, faster or earlier than you can through the air. If you've never done it, you've got to try it with, safely. On a train, you can't hear it coming. But you've probably seen in the, in the videos or something, somebody going like this, old movies, because you can hear it coming sooner because the sound travels faster through the rail than it does through the air. And that's because a solid is more tightly bound. The particles are closer together, and so the interactions are quicker. The wave velocity is faster. Think of it another way. Warm air has a faster velocity. Now this one confused me a little, so I'll try to nip it in the bud for you. Which one's more dense, warm air or cool air? Cool air. Is there, think of the molecules all moving around, right? Testing, testing. Okay, good. Sorry. <laughs> Less wiggling. While I'm stopped and interrupted, did you notice my shirt? This is closer to Einstein and the blackboard are real, but I can like wet it and erase it, let it dry, and draw a new picture on there. But so it's not quite chalkboard material, but I can get it wet and erase it, and then I just draw on it again with chalk. It doesn't come off well like that. That's why you have to get it wet. But I can wash it and reuse it. But there's your, uh, there's your bow wave for you for class. Remember, velocity equals frequency times wavelength. And in this picture, we know that the, the, the boat, so to speak, is going faster than the wave velocity. So back to wave velocity. What was I doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so warmer is wiggling. And so it I'm done wiggling. Okay. Wiggle, wiggle. They expand because they have collisions and push each other out. So I, I was thinking, well, they're not as close together, so it won't go as fast. But you have to change your thinking a little. They're moving faster, right? And so any influence on one particle is going to be more quickly transmitted to its neighbors because they're moving faster, they're hotter. We learned all about that. 
So yeah, warm air transmits uh, sound faster than cold air because there's more quick, more quick, faster interactions. Yeah. Other than air? Yeah, if I warm this up, the speed in it, in general, for most objects, yes. If I warm this up, the wave velocity would increase even more. Oh, one of my favorite things to do, it's not near as fun in Utah, but in Kansas we have better uh, thunderstorms, you know, lightning, and uh, you can uh, gauge how far away the lightning is. Because when it strikes, wah, and you see the lightning, and it travels to you really fast. But sound is much slower. We know the speed of sound, and velocity is distance over time. So you can figure out how far away it is if we knew how long it took to get to us, right? So it's real easy. You see the lightning, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and then you hear the thunder from it. Well, it took three seconds to get to you, essentially, right? How far away were we? Well, let's see. Distance equals velocity times time. The wave is traveling how fast? 340, took three seconds. How far did it go in three seconds? What is that? It's approximately, what, a thousand meters? Somebody can figure it out if you want. I wrote one down, I thought. Hey, that's the one I wrote down. <laughs> so it's that far. It's about a kilometer. So, you know, three seconds, it's a kilometer away. If it took six seconds, Hey, it's about two kilometers away. This is great. If it's like 10 kilometers away, maybe you're safe. <laughs> but it's a nice, easy thing. I like those quick, easy uses of physics. Remember the other one with uh, dropping a stone down the well? Or spitting your gum off the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge? You can see, remember how high up you are? You're like, no, I don't remember that formula, but I remember you talking about it. Right? It was that guy. How high up your distance travels if you're accelerating? Well, we know the acceleration due to gravity now. Round it to 10. You're doing this in your head, right? Count how long it took for the gum to hit the bottom. You can get distance that way. So it works with waves as well. Now, waves can reflect and refract. And before I do that, the teacher before me had this demonstration, and it's kind of a... It's not simple to set up and clean up. So since it was already out, I want to show you. Turn the camera on. Turn that on. This is oil in a frying pan. And I put uh, aluminum flakes mixed in the oil. It's special oil. And so I've been, I heated it up a moment ago. And it's warm now. And you can get convection cells. And if you zoomed in on the surface of the sun, it looks very, very similar. I just thought this was cool. It's, but it's due, through, due to convection. So you can see a, the center of the cells. So uh, this big one in the front center or bottom, the flakes are coming up from the bottom where it's hot, less buoyant, less dense. So it rises up through the center of the cell. Then it cools off and it goes back down. But there's a hot spot over here on a different spot on the skillet, and it's doing the same thing. So think if you've got two things trying to go up and around, well, they kind of run into each other, and they make these pockets or cells. And so the aluminum can help you see the pattern. It comes up through the middle, goes around and down the edges, the, the borders. Same with another one. But the sun's doing that too, big hot ball of gas. And you can see these convection cells zoomed in. It's, it's awesome. It's a good example of convection. Just looks cool. So I wanted to show you guys. So now let's bounce some sound waves around. No, no, let's not bounce sounds around. Let's do, this is more fun. 
I got a speaker here and a function generator. Turn it on. It's a nice old one. It's got vacuum tubes inside. So it takes a minute to warm up. Sound. What we can hear, a healthy human can hear 20 to 20,000 hertz. Those are the frequencies people can hear. As you get older and hearing damage, that narrows, especially on the high end. Here's 50 hertz. There's 100. 200. So what I want to do, it's a fun game, is raise your hand if you hear sound coming out of here from the function generator. If you cannot, if you can no longer hear it, put honestly, put your hand back down. Okay, let's crank it up. I'm at 30 hertz. A lot of us can't hear it that low. I can't hear that. Let's go back up. Who can hear that? That's 50 hertz. Turn the amplitude up a little. Turn it back down so I don't just 100, 200. Okay, I'm turning the amplitude down because it's getting annoying. 500, 1,000. 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. I want to note, too, I'm going to pause. I didn't change the amplitude when it got around 3,000. We're more susceptible to that. There's a difference between frequency and pitch. Pitch is our perceived notion of frequency. So maybe more accurately for Doppler effect, was we hear the pitch change because we perceive it differently. But the frequency is what something's emitted at. And most things cause a, our eardrum to vibrate at that same frequency. But we're more susceptible to around the three to 4,000 range. And it has to do with the resonance of our ears. And it sounds louder to us. It, re, it is louder to us. I'll do that again. And let's go back down to 500. We'll keep going. I'm not changing the amplitude. 1,000. 2. Four, five. Who can hear this? Put your hand up. Let's see where, where we lose folks. Let's crank it up. Well, not that sound. The high pitch, annoying one. Okay, let, we'll keep going. Oh, I can hear it too. Right about there, I lose it. Hey, you guys are honest. You're the first group I ever did this. See, the next thing I was going to do, there's usually always still hands up by the time I get to 20,000 hertz, and I turn the volume down, and hands are still up. <laughs> you guys were honest. But that's range of hearing, and it's perceived by us. So we call it pitch. But it does vary on what we can hear. Other animals can hear different things. We'll, we'll do more with reflections and, and uh, refraction and how we can change the direction of these waves as we continue next week. Your homework's due Sunday, and your paper's due next Wednesday, Wednesday at the latest. You can turn it in earlier. All right, have a good weekend.